Thanks for tuning in to Glow Shift Gauges. My name is Dave Leitner. I have about 16 years of outer body and custom experience, and today I'm going to take these Glow Shift Universal Pillar Pods and fit them to this pillar. First thing we're going to do is mount this dual pod to the pillar. So I am going to do a little bit of shaping here on the end just to get the fitment where we need it to be. The more time you take making this pod fit, the easier it's going to be in the molding process to make it look like it came this way from factory. So what I'm doing here is getting everything lined up to set my pilot holes for attaching the two together. And we'll do the same thing on the back, just really just need to make sure you're finding the getting the pod to fit the contour of your pillar correctly. Remember, these screws are not permanent. Most likely we're gonna replace those with pop rivets once we're ready to attach it permanently and use the epoxy to set it in place. So I'm gonna take a little air saw and zip off one of these so that we have the third one that we want to use. When I made the cut, I left as much material on here as possible so it can help us position this third gauge location. I'm going to remove the set screws here so we can kind of get an idea of where we want it to be and start to trim the gauge cup. So to make sure it's precise, I'm going to use a ruler just to check the measurement of the first two that are already in place. And we're about 13 and a half millimeters. So we're gonna look for the same distance here. And I'm right around 14, so I need to take off about a half. Thirteen and a half. All right. Now that we have our individual pod trimmed, I'm going to attach it to our pillar so that we can just look over and try to make sure you know we're one step closer to epoxying the the pods to the pillar. So we're getting, we're getting closer. Our initial mock-up 
would highly recommend checking this in and out of the vehicle a few times just to make sure you have your clearance to make sure the, the gauges are in a good view for when you're sitting in the driver's seat. Now that we have our pods fastened to here temporarily, what we're gonna do is remove everything and then prep our pillar, just like we did all of our pods with the 80 grit grinding disc, just to get everything ready for our epoxy that we're gonna use to bond the two together. Now that we have everything off, we'll take and we see where the edges of our pods will be and we're going to grind around all the edges. Now that we have the surface prepped for our pillar and our pods, we're going to get ourselves some adhesion promoter so that our epoxy has a little help sticking to, to the plastic surface. Um, I would recommend just a little respirator, some sort of dust mask, just when you're spraying any type of aerosol. When it comes to spraying the adhesion promoter, you don't want to put it on too wet um, or not enough, but mainly you just got to put it on just a nice medium coat. Uh, that way it doesn't act in reverse. If you put too much on, it could make your adhesives not stick. So that's the last thing that you want to happen in all this work that you're putting into it. The next step will be getting our epoxy and getting that ready. Uh, working on this by yourself, I found that probably the best way to do this is to use your epoxy on your, on your pod, set it in place, and then put your screws back in. Then as the epoxy dries, what we'll do is we'll take the screws out one at a time and replace them with some aluminum uh, pop rivets. So that way we have a nice solid foundation that we know this pod's not gonna fall off when we're driving down the road. Warmer climate's gonna help your material come out a little easier so you don't have to struggle with the adhesive trigger. Take a spreader, make sure we're getting all the material close to the edge as possible. You will have to work at a fairly decent pace because you only have a five minute working time per the directions on the side of the cartridge. Now we're looking to align it back in the original holes that we drilled I'm gonna try to keep it going and get started on this second one. Now I'm just taking a look around and seeing how much of uh, the material squeezed out the sides because I would like to go ahead and just continue that. Now I'm just using a body filler spreader to spread it all around a little bit. Now we're just gonna run some all along our seams. 
think at that point we're gonna let this first batch of epoxy cure and come back to it and remove our screws and set in our pop rivets before we continue the rest of our epoxy in and smoothing. Now that we gave the epoxy some time to dry, we're gonna take and remove our screws one at a time and replace them with a small aluminum pop rivet. The idea of using these rivets is to help bond the pod to the pillar so there's no chance of the epoxy breaking down and the, the pod and the gauge falling off while you're driving. Um, and the rivet would be easier to hide than this big screw head that we have here. So the rivet will make it a little easier for us to apply the epoxy over top of the rivet and the pod into the pillar. So we have all of the screws replaced with rivets. You can see how they are almost flush. So that's gonna make things a little easier when we are trying to do all of our finishing sanding to make this look like all one piece. Now that we have the rivets in place, we can start sanding our epoxy and getting it smooth and seeing how much more we would need to apply, if any, and make it look smooth. So we'll get our little three inch sander. I have some 80 grit on here and we're just gonna sand the epoxy down smooth and see what we have left to work with. Remember to always wear your respirator whenever you're sanding anything. Uh, anything that has a hardener in it, um, it's always just good to take precaution. Any dust, aerosols, things like that. Um, you just want to protect yourself from any of the chemicals that you're using on these pieces. Okay, now that we have our first application of epoxy sanded down, kind of roughing everything out to see what we have, what we're gonna do is go ahead and apply another coat of our adhesion promoter. So that way our second coat of epoxy has something to stick to. Let's go ahead, get our respirator on for our adhesion promoter. Now that the epoxy is dry, we're gonna get this little bit of a mess cleaned up so we can start the sanding process. Get our respirator on and go to town sanding. So after lots and lots of sanding, we got this down pretty close to where we want it to be. What I'm gonna do now is get away from the 80 grit sandpaper and move on to a 180. I like to move in 100 grit increments to help get rid of the 80 grit scratches that we have in there now. 
because what is what's going to happen is when we go to paint this we don't want to be able to see the 80 grit scratches so that's why we move on to a finer grit sandpaper And while I'm at it, I'm actually going to continue to sand the entire pillar just and pod just so that way all the surfaces are scuffed so we're getting ready for the painting part of this process. All right, we have all of our shape right where we want it. I feel like it resembles exactly what we're looking for for a triple gauge pod um, that you would buy right off the shelf from any store like Glow Shift Gauges. Okay, now we're getting down to the fun part. So we're gonna scuff the rest of this thing, then we'll get it ready for some textured paint, and then we'll add our trim color on top of that. So let's just go over this with a red scuff pad. Remember, like I mentioned, you need to make sure every square inch is sanded. Make sure all the dust is out of each of the cups. tack cloth which will help get any any last little debris that might be on there get our respirator and I'll highly recommend uh, shaking this well and light coats you put it on wet and it's gonna run right off Give each coat a few minutes to dry. I would probably put two coats of your texture on. Let, like I said, let each coat dry. All right, now that our textured paint is dry, we're ready to put on our trim color. So pretty much the same thing. Put our respirator on. Light coats, probably two, maybe three, but most likely two coats, and you'll be good to go to get this installed in your vehicle. Let's let that coat dry. Now it's time for our final coat of interior trim color. So let's get started. As you notice there at the very end, I made sure I hit my edges of the, of the pod and the pillar together, just so that way, when it's in the vehicle, when you're looking in through the windshield or looking in through the, the driver window, you don't happen to see any of the, the fillers, epoxies that we used uh, in making this custom pod. 
like we have good fitment along the top edge there. Good placement, the gauges when we're sitting in the car. Good visual, nothing's blocked, nothing's hitting. I like it, I think that'll work well. I wanna thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed us building this custom gauge pod. I want to thank everyone for watching us make this custom gauge pod from a dual pod. What do you want me to say? End it. I want to go home. That's it. I had enough. Go home, everyone. <laughs>